If you are a beginner working with pixel art in Godot, chances are you notice your assets looks blurred. In this video, I'll show you three ways to handle this issue, and as a bonus, show how you can set up a simple scene that looks like this. The reason why your image looks blurred is because of linear filtering. We interpolate between these two values to get this final value output. And that's how we can uh, map between four values to some arbitrary position in amongst them. Okay. And that's basically what happens when you click by linear. In short, when linear filtering is used, the pixels are averaged out, creating that blurred effect. So why does the nearest filtering not make it blurred? This is why when you make your image bigger using nearest neighbor, it continues to look pixelated because that's exactly what it's doing. It's preserving all that information by just duplicating a bunch of pixels in these gaps. With that in mind, the easiest way to make your pixel art sharp and crisp is to use nearest neighbor filtering, but applying that to all your image is tedious. To make life simpler, we can apply the nearest filtering globally. However, if you are mixing pixel art and raster art, you still have to constantly apply the correct filter accordingly. For my game, I'm using raster art for the background, the sky, and the landscape, while using pixel art for the foreground elements like the characters and props. Since I have a lot more foreground elements, I would set my global settings to nearest neighbor and create a base scene for my background elements. Whenever I want to add a background element, I will just instantiate from that base scene, and it will always be using linear filtering. As promised, it's time to put all this information together into the sample scene shown. Start by adding a world environment. Add a sky of your choice. I'm using panorama sky. For depth of field, add a practical camera with the following settings. Next, add your landscape and position it at a distance from the camera. This is to trigger the depth of field. Next, add your subject and foreground elements and position them near the camera. Finally, add a directional light and everything is done. To mimic the Octopath Traveler battle scene, I've added a timer to the camera and this code to make the camera move. If you are interested in more details on how to make a HD2D style game in Godot 4.0, watch this video next.